The Central American country of Guatemala has been on my list for some time. From its historical cities, volcanoes, and ancient history. These next two and a half weeks, I'll be visiting Guatemala, starting in Antigua and ending in Flores. All right, welcome to Antigua. Let's go. <laughs> wow. If you're a big Lord of the Rings fan, you'll appreciate this. <laughs> I then make my way to the city of Shayla, and I challenge myself with a three-day trek taking me from Shayla to Lake Adelan. We're ready. Let's go. Let's do this. Look at that view! <laughs> we are sitting at the overview of Lake Adelan. I spend a few days glamping and relaxing at Lake Adelan. <laughs> then it's on to Lanking, visiting its most popular attraction, Samuk Shampi. Lastly, I end my travels in Flores and check out the ancient Mayan ruined temples of Tikal. There'll be lots of adventures. Oh my god, this is amazing. No much. <laughs> Random ups and downs. I found the scorpion on the bus. Oh my god! That was seven hours. Would I ever do it again? And good times and memories to be had as I go solo traveling Guatemala. It's January 2023, New Year, first adventure of the New Year, Guatemala. Now this is a place I've had on my list for quite some time. And when I think of this country, I think of old cities and volcanoes and outdoor adventures, all things that I've built into my itinerary for this trip. And I'll be starting landing in Guatemala City and working my way up from Antigua all the way up to Flores. Now I will be solo traveling on this one, but like most of my trips, it's always interesting to see who you meet along the way. And that's pretty much it. There really isn't much else to say except that I'm really excited. I've been looking forward to this trip for some time, so let's get this adventure started. My flight to Guatemala City would take six hours with another 45 minute taxi to Antigua. All right, welcome to Antigua. It is busy here. First day of this solo traveling in Guatemala, and it's not so solo. <laughs> I'm here with Angie, who's from Colombia. I would introduce you to her, but she's very shy. Can you see Largo? What do you want to say? And we just met, so. But I've got three days here in Antigua, but two of those days I'm going to be doing uh, some activities outside of the town. So this is actually the only day that I have to enjoy the town. So let's see what's around. Antigua, with its Spanish Baroque influence and charm, is a UNESCO heritage city. Let's go! <laughs> During the 16th century, it was also the capital of Guatemala. Massive earthquakes caused damage to much of the city and its structures, and so in the 18th century, the capital was moved to what is now known as Guatemala City. Today, Antigua still remains a popular city for its local outdoor markets, food, and churches, with many attractions available within the surrounding area. <laughs> I don't know what this is, but it was not cheap to get in here. I'm gonna have to Google what this place is later on. <laughs> Angie and I just saw it and we just walked in. <laughs> Rockstar. We then grabbed the tuk tuk to our next location, but the ride there was, well. <laughs> These roads are terrible. <laughs> <laughs> Our night ended at Hill of the Cross, a point of interest to Antigua's unobstructed view of Volcano Agua. Good, beautiful morning. Day number two from Antigua. And what we're going to be doing today is something that Guatemala is very known for, and that is its volcanoes. Now, the town of Antigua is surrounded by four volcanoes. We have Acatenango and Fuego on that side, which we saw when we drove into the town. And behind me is Agua, and then further that way is Bagaya. And three of these volcanoes you can actually hike, and the one we're going to be doing today is Bagaya. And when I say we, Angie's going to be joining me. And we booked this tour through a company called Do South Travels, which my Airbnb host actually recommended it to me. So yeah, they're going to pick us up at 2 o'clock in the center of town, and it's going to be about a 6-7 hour day. And it's actually going to be a sunset hike, which is going to be really cool seeing sunset from atop of a volcano. And surprisingly, 
Guatemala's pretty chilly, <laughs> which is why I'm dressed for the occasion, especially when we get to the top of that volcano. It's gonna be pretty cold, but I'm excited and I'm ready for this. The, the height, the 1,900 meter, the top the finish, the 2,600 meter. You okay? Yeah. yeah. Okay. The mountain, Cerro Chino. Other side, Pacay. Bien, vámonos. The hike begins. You could take a horse up here. They're calling them taxis, but I'm gonna do it the real way. We're gonna earn it. <laughs> no más. <laughs> By the way, we've only been hiking for like five minutes. After 15 minutes of hiking, oh. Angela is tapping out and is going to take a horse taxi because she's gassing out. I am going to push forward. <laughs> There's her Uber. Ambulance. <laughs> and she sold out. <laughs> Just like that, I'm left behind. This weather keeps changing. This morning was cold. Afternoon's hot. They said it was gonna be pretty cold when you get to the top. I think I may have overdressed. This <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if you can see it, but that volcano behind us, that's Agua. Where's my water? <laughs> Angie's back by foot. Yes. Because now we get to walk I'm to the asteroid volcano. You're happy now. <laughs> Wait, it's possible rustic marshmallows. Leading more up in the mountain. It's a more good debut. Marshmallow for two people. Okay. One dollar stick, one dollar marshmallow, fifteen dollars. <laughs> <laughs> marshmallow in Guatemala, Angelito. Are you happy? Sadly, there is no more lava. Pacaya, the active, last year no more active, okay? Pacaya, relax. And that's really why I wanted to do this hike. Now, I did get to see lava for the first time when I went to Nicaragua, but that was from a, like a viewpoint, so it would have been nice to kind of like see it up close, but you know, it is what it is. Another one. I had one. I'll do another one. You're nice, Nice. <laughs> interrupt this message for more. So anyway, I was saying that Corona was telling me the last eruption was in 2010 and his village basically got smothered in 10 centimeters worth of ash. The big eruption, destruction of my house, the ashes in Guatemala City. And then for two whole days there was no transportation or anything available. Incredible. We then headed further up to get a better view of Pacaya. To the top. Wow. Crazy. <laughs> <laughs> That's the only way to go down. Let's do it. <laughs> I <laughs> got rocks in my mouth. That's our guide. Well, we didn't get to see any lava, but this was a fantastic day today. Thank you for a fantastic day, Corona.
As we were leaving, we got to catch a volcano fuego erupting in the distance. All right, good morning. Last day in Antigua and last day hanging out with Angie before I head into Shayla. So today we're gonna to do something adventurous and that is ATV riding through the town of Antigua. And it's gonna end up in a place called Habitanango. And if you're a big Lord of the Rings fan, you'll appreciate this. And I wouldn't say I'm a big fanatic, although I do enjoy the movie, so it's gonna be pretty cool to check that out. Our first stop was near Hill of the Cross, an area we were at the day before. The statue that you see over there when the Spaniards came along, Santiago de los Caballeros. And in front of you, you got Volcan de Agua. What happened is, like in the midst of 1500s, there was water that was accumulating in top of that volcano. There was a big earthquake, and all that earthquake, when they shook around the earth, all that water that was up there started moving around. And it came down through Ciudad Vieja. Ciudad Vieja used to be oh. the first capital of uh, Guatemala. The Guatemala. That's what flooded it. Yes. The Antigua basically is around 4,000 feet, 1,500 meters around there. Now, where we're going, uh, we're going to be up uh, 8,000 feet. We're not doing much all terrain, but uh, right into the town is really beautiful. It's kind of just like a peaceful cruise. We stopped by the side of the road for a fantastic view and for the opportunity to up our Instagram game. She's got a buddy right So I'm not as good as her, so you gotta explain to me what I need to do. Yeah, look, wow, only fans. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I feel so uh, We're gonna get going, right? Yeah, yeah. Awesome. Just a short drive located in Vuelta Grande is Habitanango, an amusement park of Middle Earth escapism nestled within the Panchoy Valley. That's incredible. It's so magical. <laughs> no pun intended. <laughs> That's pretty magical, though. This small eco village has become a worldwide tourist attraction with games, restaurants, and even rentals. $170. And then 200 for eight people, okay? Wow, ah, this is impressive. You don't have to be a fan to be impressed by this. I would say this is about the average size of a New York City studio apartment. My kingdom, my people. Wow. Yeah, it's the best. Can you see that? Oh, yeah. We even did the giant hand Instagram photo op, which of course is very touristy, but you know, it's all in fun. <laughs> oh! <laughs> wow. All right, David's going for the ride. Huh? Yeah, it's supposed to be. That's the fun of it. <laughs> There's no turning back now. No. Yeah, right there. <laughs> <laughs> that looks really uncomfortable. You could do it, Angie. That was the perfect reaction. <laughs> Priceless. Fly like an eagle into the sea. Oh, oh that's uncomfortable. <laughs> Your legs up. <laughs> Habitanango was such a fun experience. It really brought out the kid in me, and everyone in the group was just awesome to hang out with. 
Afterwards, we ended the night having dinner overlooking the valley, and it was just such an amazing night. But that's it, my time in Antigua is done. In the morning, I'm heading off to Shela, and it should take me about three hours to get there. All right, so I've made it to Shela in one piece. <laughs> Terribly uncomfortable ride, horrible on the coccyx and the spinal cord. Took three buses and one taxi to get here. First bus wasn't so bad, it was just 30 minutes. But that second driver, first of all, I got there just as the bus was about to take off, so it was pretty crowded and I ended up getting like a corner of a seat, which was really uncomfortable. And then the way that driver was hitting those corners, it was something out of Fast and Furious. People were like holding on for dear life, slipping and sliding, falling off their seats. A little too fast and too furious for my liking. Later on, as the bus made a few stops and began to clear out, I managed to get a seat for myself in the back of the bus, but that did not improve the ride at all. We were basically white knuckling the entire way. But then after that, it was another bus to the town of Shayla. Just made it to Shayla. What a mission. What a mission that was. And then a taxi to this Airbnb, this beautiful Airbnb, probably one of the nicest ones I've ever stayed at in my life, which is a really nice welcome after a long day of traveling. Now the town of Sheila itself is not too exciting. It's pretty much just a layover spot to, for me to chill and relax for a couple of days as I get prepared for probably the most physically challenging thing I've ever done in my travels. And that's gonna be a three day hike from Sheila to Lake Adelan. And um, I'm really excited about that. All right, so the first stop for today is Cerro El Baul. I hope I'm saying that right. It's a 43 minute walk. I could just take a taxi and get there, but this is a great way of seeing the town, you know? While on my way, there were a few locations to check out, one being Cementario General, which is known for its colorful and intricate plaques. I wouldn't normally film a cemetery, but this is actually listed as one of the things to do in this area. This one's pretty elaborate. Must be an important figure. Wow, this covers a lot of distance, but I think I'm good with just seeing a portion of it. And moving on. All right, so we've just entered Parque de Central America, Park of Central America. I was in need of a big breakfast to fuel up, as I would then have to walk to the end of the town before hiking up to Cerro El Baú. From here, you get a nice view of the town, but the place that we're going to, I think, is a spectacular viewpoint. So let's get there. Some really nice houses here. I love the colors. ¿Cuántos minutos más caminando? Veinte, veinte más. Oh my God. That lady just said it's 20 extra minutes to the top. I've already been walking 30 minutes. Shh. It's a trek to get up here, but that is gorgeous. All right, so do not trust Google Maps on this one. That was not 43 minutes. Um, it's 43 minutes to get to the end of the town, and then that's like another extra 40 minutes up this hill where you can clearly drive or take a bicycle too, but I opted to walk, which of course for me took a lot longer because I'm stopping to film things. But we're here, and it's a beautiful sight. It's a perfect day out. There's no one else really here. Got to sit here by myself and enjoy the view before the crowd came in, so good day. And now it's time to go back down we should be a lot easier. Gracias para todo. Luckily, I didn't have to hike down as the family was nice enough to offer me a ride back to town. Good morning, day number two from Shayla. And today what we're gonna be doing is heading out to a hot spring called Fuentes Georginas, which is gonna be very therapeutic after yesterday's longer unexpected hike. <laughs> And very healing because starting tomorrow, I begin my three-day trek with a company called Kettle Trekkers. Later on this evening, we're going to have our first meeting where we get to discuss what to expect out of this trip and what to bring on this trip. And obviously, I didn't bring any professional equipment with me. I don't have a sleeping bag or a day bag with me. But the good news is, is that they supply that equipment and it's included in the price. And the reason I think this is going to be one of the most physically challenging things I think I've ever done in my life is that although I think I'm very physically fit given my background and my work, and I've done hikes before, 
but they've been day hikes. I mean, two hours, three hours max. I've never hiked for like an entire day. I've never even actually owned professional hiking equipment. This is the first time I've actually gone out, bought hiking shoes, pants, and a jacket for this trip. And from what I'm reading, we're gonna be hiking through villages, the rainforest and the cloud forest, maybe get to stay with a local family, all things that I've never done in my entire life. So I'm really looking forward to challenging myself on this, this little three-day journey. My guide Jorge picked me up bright and early for a short, scenic, 30-minute drive outside of Shela. All right, so we've made it to Fuentes Jorginas, and Jorge was like, do you want to stay for two hours? And I was like, no, I don't think so, because I don't know if you can tell from the video, but Guatemala and this area is pretty chilly, so it may be hot going in, but coming out is going to be pretty cold. Max, I think maybe one hour, maybe, maybe 30 minutes, we'll see. But the good news is that it's a weekday, so a lot of the locals don't come until the weekend, so it might be pretty empty. Oh, it's warm. Oh my god, this is amazing! <laughs> oh, it's hot! Shit. That is super hot! Oh, it's almost like a chair. You just chilling in the little pocket right here. This is so relaxing that the rock music is kind of killing the vibe. It almost feels like you should have some more like kind of like meditative music. I must have stayed in there for at least a good hour and a half. My hands are definitely pruned. As much as I'm going to regret getting out of this pool, facing the cold, this was so worth it. I feel rejuvenated and I am ready for this hike tomorrow. And I'm leaving just as the crowd is starting to come in. It's perfect timing. That evening, I went to the Kettle Trekkers meeting filled out formalities, met our guide. My name is Jackie, I'm one of your two guides. And met the group as we discussed our itinerary before heading back home to pack. All right, just got back from the meeting, everything went well. This is what I'm gonna be bringing with me, it's two days worth of clothes. And this is the hiking bag that they lent me. All right, sleeping mat, sleeping bag, clothes will fit perfectly in there, but I do have one problem. Because I wanna film this thing, I'm gonna have to figure out how to take everything in my camera bag and fit it into here because there's no way I'm gonna be able to carry both bags. This bag alone is like 20 pounds. So, but I got everything in there, my camera, my drone, GoPro, tripods, and I gotta somehow fit it all into here. And then whatever I don't bring with me in my, my suitcase, I will leave at the office and they'll transport it for me once we reach um, Lake Adelan. That's pretty much it. We wake up at five in the morning and we begin this trek. And that's it. Let's get packing. This stuff is really heavy. 5.40 in the morning right now. Walking over to Kettle Trackers to... Oh, holy sh**, there's a, whole, there's a whole street of dogs here. <laughs> anyway, um, heading up to tra Kettle Trackers to meet up with the rest of the group. Walking with my suitcase, my camera bag, on the hiking bag and uh, just walking down eight minutes to this place I'm just getting adjusted to carrying this thing on me it's my first time carrying a hiking bag and I'm just getting used to the weight weight adjustment it's gonna be challenging <laughs> <laughs> with the knife in her hand I think we're all set we're gonna go let's do this these next three days will be trekking a total of 46 kilometers through rainforests, cornfields, and villages, ending at Lake Adelan. All right, we just started, and I'm already feeling the weight of the bag. Okay, we're going. To begin, it's a steep two-hour incline, 3,050 meters above sea level, to reach the highest point of the trek, with breaks in between, which I really needed. Guatemala has officially 37 volcanoes. Flatness, I love it. A bit of a nice welcome break through this flat field. <laughs> Definitely. This, this trek is pretty damn hard. Oh, it's just beautiful. That was the nicest part of the trek. This is the top. This is the top? It's worth it. Oh, God. 
No hands in the nuts. Nuts into the hands. <laughs> Get your hands Sorry. off my nuts. <laughs> yeah. That was hard. I mean, right off rip. It's basically a steep incline. If you've never trekked before, especially with a heavy bag, obviously it's gonna be pretty difficult. And it's just that I'm just carrying so much shit. I could have easily just filmed this with a iPhone and a GoPro, but since this is my first legit trek, I wanted to film it properly. I just ended up carrying everything, even my laptop, which I could have just left at the office and had it transported to Lake Adelan, but I just feel more comfortable having it with me. But I could definitely feel it holding me down. But I'm determined gonna make it. This area is actually known as Alaska. It has other names too. <laughs> but, and we're gonna be passing through some other towns right now. One of them is called Nueva Shintinament. So interesting fact, Kettle Trekkers is a non-profit organization and the money that they earn from these treks helps to support this community. I think they actually helped build a water supply for this, this little village here, which is great. Look at that view. You look good there. <laughs> Maybe another minute here, and then we'll get going again. Hola, buenos días. Oh, this is some of the prettiest backdrop I've ever seen. I'm so happy. All right, now that we're going downhill, this is a lot easier. I can actually lift my head up and enjoy the view. As opposed to looking down and watching my every step. Oh, like that. <laughs> we stopped to have a picnic style lunch before continuing on with the final stretch. Is that the road? Oh, yes. Okay, so we made it to the main road, but we still have two more hours before we make it to the town. After a long day, we made it to the town of Santa Catalina, where we'll be staying at a local homestay. Um, if you could just take your shoes off if possible before coming in. Oh my God. <laughs> that was seven hours. That was so hard. And the thing is, I could have kept up, even with a heavier bag, but my feet are killing me. Because the shoes that I bought, I've only worn them once for the Pacaya hike, and they're not fully broken in yet. So, we're gonna see how bad the damage is. Hello. <laughs> After meeting our host, Don Francisco, and getting settled in, we were treated to a traditional Mayan sauna called Temescal to help recover from the day. There's an empty bucket you can pour water into, hot and cold, to your desired temperature. After you, Brennan. <laughs> <laughs> Looks like a cooking oven. Oh my god. Dude. Is it hot? Oh yeah. <laughs> you gonna roast it. Holy cow, this is freaking hot. <sighs> oh, <it's so> <sighs> <laughs> we then had a big dinner loaded with carbs and called it a night to wake up early to start day number two. Good morning, 6.15 in the morning and it is freezing out here. About to head out to get some breakfast to power for our next day of the trip. Last night, my left big toe was blue. It looks disgusting. <laughs> Nick Day, one of our guides, gave me a painkiller last night, so we trek on. We started with breakfast, then deciding to bandage my foot and prep for another seven hour day. My blue toe. <laughs> mm. Good as new. I think we're ready. I'm probably gonna be trailing behind most of the day because uh, I gotta take it easy on my foot if I'm gonna survive this, <laughs> this entire trek. 50 minutes, down, down, down. And then up 20 minutes. If this day could stay like this, minimal incline, no steepness, this day would be just perfect. <laughs> but look at that view behind me, guys. Isn't that perfect? And here, the river we're going to be crossing. On this stretch of the trek, we'll be crossing a river multiple times throughout the day, which wasn't too challenging. You. <laughs> With moments to enjoy the scenery and rest, which of course, I embraced. I can't believe I'm gonna say this, but I actually prefer going up today. It's killer on the glutes, but it saves my toes. <laughs> is 
just say we, we thank God for the support, economic support from our brothers who work in the United States and also those from this community who donated to different um, projects in this town. For example, this road was kind of a, a project where a bunch of people, especially those from the United States, sent remittances back and they built this road. This is a common way to better the community, for people who have left and are now working in the United States, and they send money back to their family members here. People don't always come back. Some do. For example, Don Francisco, who we stayed at last night, he went to the U.S. and worked there for about five years. He came back. He, of course, lives now in his community in Santa Catarina. But um, many people do leave, and their life turns into a life that is in the U.S. That's just kind of a reality. But then if you make it, then you are living in the U.S. as an un undocumented immigrant and you don't have access to services that other people who are citizens have, you're probably getting underpaid, under minimum wage. And so life is not all like rainbows and butterflies just because you've made it there and you're able to send money back here. We then made our way to what is known as Ice Cream Village because, you guessed it, they sold ice cream. We were all looking forward to this, but the suspense was, would there be any there once we arrived? Is that good news? We got ice cream? Oh. <laughs> Uh. Worth it though? Yeah. <laughs> Alright, so we are now walking to what Jackie says is called the cornfield of beauty, but they're pretty dead. <laughs> Still a beautiful sight, something out of the Wizard of Oz. Hello. Ooh, that's cold. <laughs> River crossings smashed. Oh, a road. Thank God. It's a miracle. <laughs> it's, it's a miracle. The homestay we're staying at tonight will be hosted by a gentleman named Don Fernando. And the good news is that he has hot showers. <sighs> I need a hot shower so bad. We made it to the town of Chiprian with Don Fernando greeting us at our arrival. Buenas tardes. Feeling at home, we took a moment to relax and celebrate the day's conquest. Cheers. Cheers. Quiero decir, gracias para dejarnos quedemos en su casa. Mi hermano, bienvenido. Getting to speak with Don Fernando, you could see that he's a kind and very generous man. He and his family cooked us a massive meal. Afterwards, we got to roast marshmallows by the fire, and then Nick Day suggested that we do a talent show. Oh! oh I heard something crack! Oh! It always surprises me what random talents people have. From tricks, juggling, and dancing, I decided to demonstrate some film action with my very reluctant assistant, Johan. So stiff. <laughs> Don't be nervous. Don't react. <laughs> <laughs> and Brandon. Whose phone is that? Tell it. Let's do it. The last day of the trek began with a 3 a.m. wake up call for a sunset view. I can see the city. I'm always excited to be here. Whoa! morning and we are at what I would say is the highlight of the entire trip. This is the big finale. We are sitting at the overview of Lake Adelan and uh, we woke up at 3.30 in the morning. Well, 
I was already awake because the dogs kept barking, but we woke up at 3.30 in the morning to hike over here to catch the beautiful sunrise of Lake Adelan, and it's just gorgeous. We have Volcano Fuego right across from us, which we actually got to see erupt a couple of times. When it was pitch black, you can't really see it now. After this, we are gonna go trail down to San Pedro and then make our way over to San Juan. And that's San Pedro, and then we're gonna cross over to San Juan over here. Once we arrive, that's pretty much the ending of this three-day trek, and I'm so happy I got to do this. I mean, it could have gotten better health-wise, but I'm so glad I got to do this, especially with this amazing group of people. For my first real trek, I couldn't have asked for a better group, and I'm really, really happy I got to share this experience with them. Anyway, gonna enjoy the rest of this view. And this is a special moment because it's Rebecca's birthday today. Woo! Happy birthday! Gracias! <laughs> We're about to play a birthday song, and we're gonna dance. Okay. Don't don't dance right. off the cliff. Can I join you? Yeah. You guys are living on the edge, dancing on the cliff, literally. And, and now they're doing the Macarena. I join you guys, but my feet are killing me. I gotta save my feet for the rest of the hike. The final stretch was by far the easiest and most scenic, but every step was so painful that my only focus was to get to the end. I made it. That was so hard, so painful, but I made it. Once we reached San Pedro, we jumped on the back of a truck to get us to San Juan. It was just a short drive to the town where we'd have our final meal as a group. We celebrated our achievements and said our final goodbyes, then rewarded ourselves by jumping into the Adelan Lake to cool off. We went our separate ways, as there's many towns along the shores of Lake Adelan accessible by water taxi. I'll be staying in the Santa Cruz area, along with a few others from the trek. So that's it, three days of trekking, and I gotta give it to trekkers. That was incredibly difficult. I'm very proud of my performance. Probably wasn't the best idea to do a three-day trek my first time out, but you know, that's how I am. By day one, I was already compromised. Second day, I got really adjusted to the weight of the bag, but I was basically powering through the entire thing since day one. By day three, even though it was the shortest trek of the day and had some of the most gorgeous landscape views, I unfortunately didn't record a lot of it because I just wanted to complete the trek. Anything uphill was painful on the glutes because of the heavy bag and then everything going downhill was painful on the feet. But you know, I pushed through it. Was it fun? Not really. Would I ever do it again? Fuck it. Well, maybe. Yeah. Yeah, I probably would, but just not right now. Not, not in the near future. I definitely have to recoup, heal my feet first. I'm probably gonna lose a toenail from this. But anyway, I am now in Lake Adelan at a place called Free Cerveza. And there's a lot of cool activities to do here, but in all honesty, I'm probably not gonna do much except relax. I'm gonna use this place as a rehabilitation center. I don't wanna do anything that has to do anything with walking. <laughs> I refrained from the usual late night hostel games, but still ended the night admiring the fireworks coming from the town. It was cold here last night. I actually had to wake up and put on all my clothes, as you can see. Foot's feeling okay, still painful, and I know I said that I wanna, didn't want to do anything, but two of the guys that I did the trek with, Dee and Matt, they're also here with me in Free Cerveza. This afternoon they want to do some kayaking, so I think I could do at least the kayaking. It's just walking there is going to be painful, but I, won't, I don't have to use my feet to kayak, so <laughs> I think I could do that, because it's just not in my nature to sit around and just do nothing. I have to do something, some kind of activity, so. I think that's what's gonna happen. But first, gonna get some breakfast, and then later on, kayaking. Yeah, I know. Now I'm getting filmed. Now I can't fuck anything up. I am 
here with Matt. Matt's doing most of the work while I film. <laughs> no, but am I doing wrong? Are you, are you putting the same in, like force into each side? Yeah. I don't know. Maybe I'm scrolling the oceans. <laughs> You're already in now. You're gonna go in. You just got. You're already in. <laughs> so this is the day. Chilling out in Lake Adelaide. Sorry. Okay. <laughs> Nice. So Brenda's back. He came down and he walked over from his hostel to hit on all the ladies here. <laughs> Day two was much of the same, of relaxing and enjoying some activities in the lake. Are you already off, huh? <laughs> Haven't done this in a few years. Last time I was in Costa Rica. I'll try standing up, but I might fall in. He's standing. He's standing. Looks a little, little, looks a little shaky. Whoa! And he's down. Oh no, no, the boat's coming. Yeah, yeah. Surf the wave. Surf the wave. Come on, man. Try <laughs> <laughs> Shove you off, dude. <laughs> Shove off. <laughs> that is a new technique. Call the Brendan backwards. <laughs> Just gotta work on my paddling skills. Whoa. Whoa, 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 whoa. That's it. I drank the water. I got COVID. Ugh. That wasn't my fault. The boat waves knocked me over. Wow, it was so peaceful out here. So Brendan's superpower is that he can nap anywhere. I can get used to this. This active relaxing lifestyle just waking up every morning enjoying the sun doing some activities yeah i need to get out of new york city it's a race to the finish line and brandon takes it good day good afternoon that afternoon i met up with brendan john hunt and rebecca who were all part of the trek group for lunch that was our last day together as we're all continuing on with our separate journeys Mine started with a 7 a.m. water taxi, as I'm now going to be headed to Langking. Just took the water taxi to Pana, and once again, Google Maps has led me astray. It says that it was going to take a couple hours to get to the town of Langking, but from what the people at Free Silvestre were saying, this is going to be an all-day affair. Probably get there around 7, maybe even 8 p.m., which means I'm going to lose at least a half a day, which sucks. All right, let's just get to Langking. The bus to Lanking took seven hours. Once I arrived, three of us were crammed into a tiny tuk-tuk to get to our hostel. We all fit in there? I'm <laughs> I got my suitcase on my lap in a tiny tuk-tuk. It's amazing what they do. Home sweet home. I was staying at the Zypha Lodge, and because I only had one more night, I signed up for a group tour, and in the morning, took a bumpy hour and a half ride for Lanking's biggest attraction, Samoke Champagne. My name is Shiki. Today I'm going to be doing that with two friends. And for the first activity we will do today, we're going to look at the water cave. So inside we will stay one hour or one hour and a half. Yeah, they're taking the color boy. Hey! Put the crocodile, man. That's cold. Hey! <laughs> it's creepy, that's cool. <laughs> We're just wandering off in the dark without that guy. There's no light at all. No light. Shit in your face. It's actually shit. Yeah, it's shit. Yeah, it's shit. shit. So, you know, you need for the entrance and for the way back. And don't lose it. <laughs> it's getting deeper. It's just me and the candle. Stay in the left eye and wait. Yep. Ha, ha, ha. 
<laughs> that was interesting. Nice to meet you. In what world are we going to do that? Oh my oh. god. <laughs> The water swing was really fun, and then we got to walk further down to check out this beautiful waterfall. Then it was a 45 minute hike uphill to see a viewpoint of Samok Shampi. Samok Shampi, meaning where the river hides under the earth in Kichek language, is a series of cascading turquoise pools popular amongst tourists. The weather's not perfect, but it's empty. <laughs> oh my god, look at this. This is spectacular. Looks like a personal pool. I'm gonna go in. Don't mind if I do. Spending the day in Samok Champi was incredible, but unfortunately, I wouldn't get to explore more of Lang King as I had to move on. No, my time here is done. It's been raining for the last couple of days. I didn't even get to use the pool. It's a shame because this place is pretty awesome. But I got another long day to Flores, the last stop of my journey. So, gotta get going. We were 10 minutes into our drive when it was brought to a sudden halt by an unwanted passenger. We found the scorpion on the bus. Wait, how big is it? You saw it? Yeah, it's like this big. Oh, crap. Does he have it? No. Are you kidding me? Oh my god, it's giant. <laughs> it's giant or what? Oh my god. Oh yeah, he got it. He's, he's pretty dead. Oh, it's tiny. Once that was taken care of, we were back on track to Flores. I guess that's how we're going to get across. After seven hours, I made it to Flores. Flores is the capital of Patan. I'll be staying on the island of Flores, which is connected to the mainland by a short causeway and sits within the Patan Lake. Hotel Gretel. made it to Casa del Guero. It's a hostel, but I booked a private room. Nothing fancy, just a simple place to recuperate because um, I've been pretty banged up on this trip. It started off with my foot during the hike, and because my foot was compromised, I started compensating the way I walked, and from that, I started developing knee problem. Then my finger somehow started blowing up. I don't know how that happened. And then yesterday, I, I burned my ear at the cave, <laughs> going down the ladder. I had the candle in my hand and accidentally burned my ear. So now I have an ear burn. Anyway, I'm in Flores, the last stop of my trip. The weather's been crap right now, but hopefully it clears up tomorrow to enjoy my last activity, which is going to Tikal, which is the point of coming to Flores. But Tikal has a lot of walking, so um, I'm gonna need, definitely need to recover tonight, hopefully enough for me to push through visiting Tikal tomorrow. In the morning, I took an hour and a half shuttle to Tikal National Park. This was through a group tour, which also included a guide. Oh my God. Ladies and gentlemen, Tikal, the lost mine civilization. Incredible. So only 3% of Tikal was exposed to the public. But if you want to see the 3% chicos, you have to be here a full day. The round stone that you can see there, they use for to do the human sacrifices. The most famous king was buried under temple number one by his first son. We're gonna call him King Cacao. You can explore the largest residential area where only the noble family live. Hidden within the rainforest of the El Patan region, Tikal was once the largest Mayan city with over 12,000 structures. It was discovered by gum sappers in 1848, with British archaeologist Alfred Mosley being the first man to map and photograph Tikal in 1881. This is incredible, but I'm not gonna lie, these steps are killing my knee. <laughs> Abandoned for a thousand years, theories suggest overpopulation, drought and deforestation may have been the reason for its collapse. These stairs are steep. I shouldn't be doing this, but I'm like a kid at the candy store, I can't help it. <laughs> Well, you could be here all day, but they only gave us till 12.10 to meet back with the group. 
and crap. <laughs> have to walk down all these stairs again. Uh, let's see if we can get up there. They was the founder of many places built in the whole northern part of Yucatan. Later, that place was conquered from center of Mexico, Teotihuacan, to Yucatan by Aztec. Around 1492, Aztec was conquered by Spaniards. And that was the ending of this civilization in Mexico side. Later, that part of Guatemala was conquered by them in 1524. But 80%, they decided to move to the south part of Guatemala, traveling from Petén to the southwest of the country where they found the Atitlan Lake. That's why a run of Antigua, Guatemala, Shela, uh, Atitlan Lake, you saw many indigenous people. So they are pure Mayan descendants that now represent 64% uh, of the whole Guatemalan, uh, Guatemalan population. As known, Lost World, because this was the last part of Tikal that they found in the jungle. This was the first place that the Maya used to live at the beginning. So it was the beginning of Tikal, 900 BC. Ready to enjoy the best view of Tikal? Our guide Henry calls this the Mayan elevator. Real funny. Now, I'm not a big fan of Star Wars, at least not the later ones, but if you are, you'll appreciate this because Tikal happens to be the location of the 1977 Star Wars 4. The North Americans call the Star Wars Temple because George Lucas came in 1977 to use the top of Temple 4 that you're gonna see now and the view that they included in, in the Rebel Base movie episode 4, which is number one. You're gonna see the same view that you can see on that movie. This is the big climax, the largest temple here in this complex. Tikal was incredible, and at the end, I got to sit there and soak in that final moment, recapping my entire trip. So this is the end of the tour. The Star Wars Temple was a nice finale to wrap up yet another epic adventure. The next day, I booked the 7 p.m. overnight bus to Guatemala City. This is nice. With 10 hours ahead of me, I was able to get some rest, then getting a taxi to the airport to head back home. We started off 2023 with a banger. Guatemala was the adventure I was looking for, and it delivered some beautiful locations. Though I was solo, I got to meet wonderful people of all ages, different states, and countries. Guatemala! People I may never see again, but for that one moment in time, we bonded over an amazing experience. With every travel, I'm in search of new experiences and fulfilling an urge to challenge myself, which I certainly did. Thank Christ. The weather in Guatemala is up and down, I went during their summer season, and you can go from wearing flannel shirts to coats to suddenly shorts and a t-shirt within a day. I think I may have overdressed. The people? I can't express how nice it is to be welcomed into a country, greeted with a buenos dias and a smile as you pass by. It's funny how these moments always seem to happen off camera when you're not expecting it. There are moments I take with me, and something you'll just have to see for yourself. I got to do pretty much everything I set out to do in Guatemala, and if I never get to visit again, I'm fully content with the experience I had. And so, till the next one. Slice my finger catching the drone. Good. Yeah, yeah. Cut. <laughs> <laughs>